Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I did the rainbow colored LED mod. As you can see, pretty much everywhere there's a different color going on and it fades around, changes colors and it looks really sick, really sick. Um, this lab mod is going to focus on the analog sticks, the D-pad and the triggers. So those items you will need to buy in transparent and you probably can do it on eBay. I bought this and did this mod many years ago. I have no clue where I got it from. But yeah, you will also need a switch if you want one, so you can disable it. And you can also do the SMD LEDs, which I will do in the future, but I don't do now. My power just died because my battery was empty. So um, yeah, I also have a scuff gaming controller, which I let modded, but um, that's not the point of this video. This is all about the rain color, rainbow colored mod. So the first thing you're going to do is disassemble your controller until you can remove the faceplate. And you should already know how to do that. This video is just about how I did my mod, how I installed my LEDs, not really a disassembly guide. Um, I tried to make this video yesterday by um, doing a shell swap, but the shells were counterfeit so they don't fit. So I'm gonna show in the white shell how I built the switch in and stuff, and you can use that as a reference too. So yeah, uh, first disassemble the controller, which is pretty easy. And then I will show what I've done to let mod it like this. All you have to do is uh, get the motherboard out with the screw. Then pop this out. You push these things to the side and then you can lift it up. The rumble, mode, the rumble pack I already had removed. So uh, the triggers of course come first and then you take out this. I took white electrical tape and put it actually there where the anal analogs are. And cut it out with a, with a sharp knife. The reason I do that is because it's white plastic, so I'm pretty sure that the LEDs are going to shine a little through the plastic. So uh, I had that with the camera one, so you see a little light through there. And I did the same thing there, but with black electrical tape. So I put electrical tape here. It's not making anything thicker or something, but it's going to isolate the light. But Because I fear that this might let some light through, but we will see. We will see. It doesn't really matter because there's going to be a m many lights anyway. But yeah, you can see I cut out at the deep head, I cut out the sides and also on top I cut out those lanes. I did the same thing now on the white one with a Dremel and a knife and some tweezers. I work my way to get that out so you can see that it's all stuff is right here. So uh, I fit the same LEDs in there without even needing to make a new set or something. I just see that one of them got loose though, that one. So I'm gonna resolder that. And then I'm gonna see if everything fits. Just a quick look on the LEDs. It's just five millimeter LEDs soldered together so they would fit. This is just trial and error. You gotta figure out the lengths. With, I did this with hand, no measuring or whatsoever. So that's what you do. You make like a circle and then you put them inside the controller. I'm gonna try to do that with one hand, so hang on. Let me refocus that, as you can see. This might get difficult, but... Nearly. So I have three of them in. This one is making some difficult, you get the point, I'll install that perfectly when the video is off, but that's how you install the LEDs there. For the switch I'm not using anything special, it's just a regular switch. And I'm gonna mount it on the same place I always did here, but this time I think I'm gonna do it nicely because I have a good tremor and lots of time. So I'm gonna do this patiently and see how it goes. If you can see here, it doesn't look too good, so this time I went with a drop of super glue. And I made sure I put like one drop here where the D is and one drop on the other side and then I laid it on top. And as you can see, it's not the perfect job, but it looks pretty nice and it and it still works, that's important, and it's pretty tight, so that should be good to go. When I'm done I might put a drop of super glue under there, but for now I'll just keep it like this. And I have my switch on there now. So now I started on the wiring. Um, I chose the right side, it doesn't really matter as long as the power comes from the middle. Even that doesn't matter, but that's just how you should do it. But as you can see, I'm running the negative lead to the bottom there and the positive is on the top. So that goes at the moment to 
what I already have pre-made without what I will show in a second because you need to probably replicate that too. But that's how I make my D-pad light up. So you can cut this so it fits better, but I don't really care. It doesn't matter. When you do it properly, it doesn't really matter. If you do it, the LEDs are not properly in place and so then you have to probably cut it, but this works, so it's good like this. So it turned out that the white ones don't fit because they're counterfeits and I have to reinstall it here so I can continue making this tutorial but I will be building it back into its original one. So I put this one back and I cut the cable so now we're gonna rewire everything. So you can see I have positive from here. So you should get one positive and one negative and I suggest running the negatives to here. So as you can see on the left side, it's uh, on the negative, this one doesn't matter. This is just the main power that will go to the board. So I'm going to leave that up here. This one is something else. We will get to that later. But um, so you should be running two cords from here, one to here and one that we will get later. And positive from here up on this side is probably useful. I still have my electrical tape on the inside here to make it not give so much light. Yeah, so we built this back together. Everything is in there like it should be. And then we're going to go to the next step, which will be this. And this I'm not going to rebuild. You will have to replicate this. So as you can see, I run always two wires, two LEDs. You can see uh, this is in the center that will light up the analogs. There's one here and one there. They're hard to see, but they are there. So there's... Yes, now you can see it. There's two LEDs and there are two LEDs. And then I have two LEDs on the top here for the triggers and the same on the other side. So you will have to wire that up, get it in there, hot glue it, space is there enough. Get one for positive up there and I will get negative from here, which is that short wire that will run to the switch, which will be in the center here. So I will install that in the housing and then show you how it looks. Quick side note, you can always use the PS controller battery to test out your LEDs. So as you can see, I hooked up the negative, the positive, and yes, it works. So this is just for the D-pad. You can see if I put this on top here, everything lights up. So I can check that all LEDs are working, and they are. You won't see that on camera, but I can see. So that works. So I can un unplug the battery. and continue the installation to the closest LED from the switch so uh, this one purple wire goes here and there's one on the bottom that goes underneath to the d-pad and that's all you need there's two pluses here one for the d-pad one for the rest I'm gonna install the motherboard and then show you where I hook those up the main negative that comes from the switch I run to that one which is 2.8 volts and positive, I just take off the rumble pack and positive. That one is always on and that should be good. So let's see if this works. Yep, everything is working. So I can put everything back together and be done with wasting my time because I gained absolutely nothing because I'm still having the same controller. Yeah, but at least I got a tutorial out of it. So maybe you guys have a more in-depth view on how to let much of controller like this with the rainbow LEDs which is really dope so now you should be checking if everything is good um, it look it's looking sexy so that's good and um, then you should probably test on some game or something if all the keys work every single one I mean so also the these where you press them in those are working Jumping is working, that's working, running is working, all the movements are working, the camera is working, triggers, yes, every single one of them is working. So this is a fully functional controller again. Yes, also the, the PlayStation button works, as you can see I can toggle Windows stuff there. So yeah, it's... It, it was a failure and a success at the same time. I couldn't change it to a white one because it didn't fit, but at least I could make a video on how to lap mod your PlayStation controller. 
for the SMD LEDs you just need to solder them so that's really hard I can't show in a video how to get skills in soldering because that's all you need you're gonna need some soldering skills I've done it on my other controller I will do it on this one but not today it's like 4 a.m. time for me to sleep so yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this tutorial and managed to make your own controller that looks as dope and if you have like an emotional day a very dark day you have this toggle here to fit your dark style so that's working as well so yeah Thanks for watching. Bye.